part of it off with just talking about you know how you decided to found the company, what problems you were trying to solve, and uh, and what the company does. Yeah, um, we initially got started. Right, I got started on really tinkering with the idea uh, in the early part of 2020 uh, when COVID first happened. Um, you know, like a lot of folks, uh, found myself spending some time uh, in places I I wasn't thinking I'd be spending 2020. Uh, I, I live in New York City. I'm here with my family and. We spent some time in, in, in the early days in Florida, um, living at my mother-in-law's house, a uh, little added space for our kids and whatnot. And, you know, all of a sudden, everyone's spending time in different places. They, it, I was at Airbnb at that point and saw the transitions that were happening in that business. You had a, a, a flight from, uh, you know, urban short-term stays in apartments and condos throughout, you know, cities in the world to long-term stays, two, three weeks plus rural stays, et cetera. And so everything's sort of shifting underneath you. And, um, you know, then we start to get six months into that and everyone, all of a sudden, like you see a lot of capital starting to flow into the system. Um, you know, people having stimulus checks, people having extra income, people thinking about, you know, buying homes in certain markets now that they weren't thinking about buying homes in. So it was really geared towards thinking about, well, you know, there's this proliferation of options right now to do this. You can go out and buy a home yourself. There's these fractional plays where, you know, you buy an, an eighth of a home or, you know, a quarter of a home and you kind of have a modern day timeshare where you're splitting it four ways with four people or eight ways with eight people. And, you know, I looked into some of those and kind of wasn't really enthused by the consumer value proposition of, you know, getting a hard 40 days in a home and having to, you know, dance around you and six other people in terms of where we want to spend time or when we want to spend time, who gets a holiday and this and that. And I started thinking to myself, well, you know, wouldn't it just be better if I could go to the home whenever I want to go and have someone, you know, basically pay for my home, pay for my time, right? Uh, all I'd have to do is put it on a short-term rental platform or Airbnb. Started digging into more of what that looked like. Um, so when you look at Airbnb, it's, it's really, uh, in the short-term rental space as a whole, it lacks quality supply. Most people don't realize this. Um, you know, they hear an article or they or they hear something or read an article, and it talks about you know it, it's it's very hard to make money in this space, and it can be. That's because there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of you know to put it bluntly, Max, there's a lot of garbage out there that that doesn't really return. People think it's as easy as putting IKEA furniture into a four walls and trying to return some right. profit, and it's a little harder than that. The top eight percent of of hosts on Airbnb. Uh, and a lot of these short-term rental uh, marketplaces generate 20 to 25% more in terms of revenue than the rest of the platform because they're driving that quality. They're driving that standardization. A lot of them are super hosts or have some sort of verification attached to them. Um, and there's not enough of that out there and there's not enough ways to make that. So I started thinking about, well, if there's not enough of this quality supply and a lot of the marketplace players and incumbents aren't going to go after that, who wants to buy those homes? Who are those people? those individuals out there, those customers out there who want to buy that. 5% of Americans own a vacation investment or second home. 65% would like to own one. Clearly, there's a very large gap in that number. The 5% that owns one today, uh, generally high net worth folks. You know, I live in Europe. It's the person buying a you know $6 million home in the Hamptons. Doesn't really need a ton of help doing that. They don't really need to see around the corners and understand how much the home's going to make. Um, you know, renting it out when they're not there is probably not the top of their concern. They go when they want to go and when they're not there, they figure it out. But, um, the next 5% off of that, the five to 10% is where we really focus. It's our, it's our TAM. It's our total addressable market. It's, uh, you know, the middle, middle, upper class, the mass affluent of America, so to speak. Um, these are the folks we really go after. And I think that's a really interesting customer, uh, because they have in a lot of cases, you know, there, maybe there's, uh, one or two people working in the household well-educated, good jobs, all of that. And um, they have the spare cash in a lot of cases to put down 20% uh, on a nice, you know, I'm sitting in New York, a nice home upstate, um, you know, for three, four, four, $500,000, $600,000, something that, um, you know, in that market is, is, is pretty moderately priced, so to speak. And they don't have the risk tolerance though, to go into that home and say, yeah, I'm going to spend 40 days a year here. Is this the right home? Is this going to return when I'm not there? Am I designing this out the right way? Uh, to be able to generate that return? How am I pricing it and managing it? How am I financing this purchase? And we really try to remove all of the barriers and friction and all the risk really for an end consumer to get there.